Hello, I am Dr. Azad from MedicoVisual.com and in today's visual lecture we will talk about development of eye and we will have a basic overview of development of eye and let's start the discussion from the very basic concept that here we have the trilaminar germ disc and out of the trilaminar I have only shown the ectoderm and endoderm and of course here is the oropharyngeal membrane and here is the cloacal membrane and here is the primitive streak. Now I will not go into details of these structures because you already know these things. Now we will just hide the endoderm. So if we hide the endoderm we can see that here is the notochord coming from the primitive node. Starting from the primitive node here is the notochord and this structure here it is called precordal plate precordal plate is a mesodermal tissue which is wedged between the oropharyngeal membrane and the cranial end of the notochord and if you want to know more about the precordal plate the structure precordal plate we have a complete visual lecture only on the precordal plate so what happens actually that this notochord it induces the formation of neural tube what it will do is that it will induce the thickening of overlying ectoderm so this is the ectoderm so in the midline it will release certain factors certain chemical or certain proteins actually and these proteins will cause the thickening of the central ectoderm so let's suppose here is this thickened ectoderm in the midline and this thickened ectoderm is called neural plate it's a thick plate of ectodermal tissue and it is called neural plate now what will happen that at the anterior or cranial end actually it is cranial end but some embryologists like to replace the term cranial with anterior and the reason we have already discussed in the lecture of gastrulation let's not go into that now what happens that at the cranial end of this neural plate some cells here some cells at the cranial end they will become specialized and they will be destined to form the eye so they are termed as eye field so there will be the formation of eye field here and these cells they will express special proteins so here are those cells they will produce special proteins and one of the important protein out of these I will not go into details but one of the important protein that is expressed by this eye field it is called eye field eye field right so one of the important protein that is expressed that is produced that is transcribed within these cells is called PAX protein PAX6 protein PA6 protein right so we have two eyes you know but right now we have a single eye field right we have a single eye field now to form the two eyes the single eye field is divided into two it becomes bilateral structure let me tell you how actually this precordal plate it has only a few functions and one of the important function is that precordal plate will put fingers on its lips and it will say shh <laughs> well actually i am just joking the precordal plate does not have lips and even it does not have hands but it will help you remember one thing <laughs> let me tell you what is that thing so what it will do is that it will put its finger on the lips in the center and it will say shh <laughs> and this will this single eye field will be divided now into two eye fields it will become bilateral structure and why I said it will say shh <laughs> actually the reason is that SHH let me write it here shh SHH so what it will do is that it will actually release a protein called sonic hedgehog there is a protein called sonic hedgehog this protein has many functions in embryology uh, but one of the important function is that this protein is being released by this precordal plate here and as the precordal plate is lying in the center so what will happen that in the central midline of this eye field let me show you exactly so initially 
here whole this was the i field right so what will happen that as there is a huge concentration of sonic hedgehog in the central midline here so here in the central midline where a lots of sonic hedgehog is expressed these cells they will stop being the part of they will stop being the part of i field so hence this i field will be divided into two structures well you must be knowing that i do not typically teach these molecular biology things in embryology but why i am doing it here the reason is that it has very important clinical implication normally the the single i field is divided into two bilateral structures to i field this is the normal process but for some reason if it fails to happen then what will happen that rather than two i fields being formed a single i field is formed and hence the single i field will be converted into a single i single central i and that is called cyclopia that is called cyclopia and that is a developmental abnormality in cyclopia there will be the single midline i and this is due to the uh, dysfunction single midline i this is due to the dysfunction of division of the the i field the the single i field must be divided into two i fields and if it does not happen it leads to cyclopia so next what will happen that the process of neurulation will start and we have discussed the neurulation already that neural plate it will invaginate inward there will be a formation of depression here and its folds will meet in the midline let me show you the animation then you will be able to understand it easily let's watch the animation carefully so here you can see these are the folds here these are the folds here they will meet in the midline uh, yeah so they will meet in the midline like this are you getting it and they will oppose together in a zip like fashion right but still at the anterior end and at the posterior well not anterior cranial and caudal end at the cranial and caudal end they are by the way also called anterior and posterior end so at the cranial and caudal end there will be still the gap within the fold so folds are not clearly not properly closed initially so these are there are the still holes and you know dorsal to it is the cavity let me show you exactly so here is a cavity actually it is called amniotic cavity so these holes are connecting the this primitive neural tube with the with what with the amniotic cavity and these holes these openings these pores they are called anterior this is anterior neuropore neuropore and this is posterior posterior neuropore right and by the way these are later closed uh, this is closed at about 24 to 25th day of uh, gestation and this is closed at about 27 to 28 or 29 roughly there is some discrepancy among textbooks but this is roughly the timeline of closure of anterior and posterior neuropores so anyhow what will happen that these neuropores will be ultimately closed but the point here that i want to stress that even before these neuropores are closed and even before this neural plate is properly converted into the neural tube even before that process is culminated there will be the formation of depressions bilaterally in the eye field there will be the formation of pits or depression or grooves will be formed let me show you so here you can see the grooves will be formed if we see here the grooves are formed here right here also the grooves are formed and the, what is the name of these grooves these grooves are called optic grooves and they are also called optic sulcus optic grooves or optic sulcus sulci i should write bilaterally we have this optic here is that optic grooves or optic sulci or if you if we talk about one sulcus one groove one pit that is called optic sulcus 
and the point here that I want to highlight here is that the development of optic grooves or optic sulcus, sulci, it starts even before the neural tube is formed. This is the reason why in textbooks you must have read that the, the optic grooves or optic sulci, they develop in the neural folds. They do not develop in the neural tube, they develop in the neural folds. That is very important and you must understand this concept. Still the neural tube is not formed, it is not separated from this ectoderm. They will later separate from this ectoderm and even at this folding stage, at the neural fold stage, the, the grooves are formed. Now later what will happen that they will, these neuropores will ultimately close and the tube will form, tube will separate from the ectoderm, the surface ectoderm will then again coalesce in the midline and it will become a continuous layer, right? It will become a continuous layer which will be forming some important components of the skin let's not go into that and the neural tube will separate so here you can see neural tube will separate and again still the neural tube has these optic grooves or optic sulci but the starting of formation of optic groove or optic sulci it begins even before the neural tube is formed it starts with the formation of neural folds now here is the same neural tube after the folding has occurred and I will not explain the process of folding in this lecture and along with that of course we have the primitive GI tube and we have the ectoderm. We have cut a part of ectoderm and only the neural tube is shown as a complete model. Now again at the anterior or cranial end of neural tube we have these optic grooves. Now what will happen that this neural tube will grow and it will form three major swellings. Let me show you here. So here you can see three major swellings will develop and these swellings are called the, the this superior one is the prosencephalon then we have mesencephalon and the last one is rhombencephalon prosencephalon mesencephalon and rhombencephalon they are also called forebrain swelling midbrain swelling and hindbrain swelling respectively now what will happen that if you trace it the this optic groove it will be present in the cranial most swelling in the prosencephalon swelling so here you can see that the optic groove is in the or optic sulci they are in the the prosencephalon swelling and actually the prosencephalon swelling it is divided into two parts one is the telencephalon and other one is the diencephalon. Actually, if you are confused, don't worry. We will discuss the details in the development of central nervous system. And this is called diencephalon. Here it is mostly the cramming, but you must remember this is very important point that uh, if someone asks that where in the neural tube, where this optic groove or optic sulci they are located, you must tell that they are located in the diencephalon part of the prosencephalon. Where they are located? They are located in diencephalon part of the prosencephalon and this diencephalon it will be forming mainly the thalamus of your brain and hence the eye the optic nerve it will later form the optic track and optic nerve and along with that there is also optic track that we will discuss later but ultimately the optic track and optic nerves these structures the nervous connection they are first connected with the thalamus of course they will also develop the connections with the cerebrum we will not go into details of that but the point is that initially the the optic groove it is connected with the diencephalon which will form the thalamus now what will happen that initially as i have told you it's just a groove or depression or pit or sulcus but what will happen that it will grow further it will grow in the lateral direction outward it will grow outward like this and the swelling will become much larger so you see this depression it has become much larger and as it becomes bigger now it is no more called optic groove or optic sulcus now it is termed as what it is called now it's a vesicular swelling so now it is called optic vesicle so 
in a nutshell what happened that optic groove grows and optic groove is converted into optic vesicle now to understand further that what happens next what we will do is that we will just remove a part of this uh, diencephalon swelling and along with that we will remove this optic vesicle and we will also remove of course here uh, outside here there will be the ectoderm as well as here is the ectoderm so here also there is a ectoderm so we will also remove a part of ectoderm and then we will observe these things but right now let's just focus on to this part onto diencephalon and onto this optic vesicle so let's go to another 3d model to understand these concepts so here is just a part of diencephalon that has been cut here and here we can see the optic vesicle now as you can see from this 3d model that basically the optic vesicle is actually the continuation it is direct continuation or it is outward extension of the diencephalon it is nothing more than an outward extension of the diencephalon so what will happen with this optic vesicle is that it will grow further and its proximal part here is this proximal part and here is the distal part now it's distal part will grow a bit further but its proximal part it will become narrow like this let me show you the animation so here you can see its proximal part has become narrow and now this narrow part it is no more called optic vesicle the distal part is still vesicle here we have the optic vesicle it's like a vesicle very logical name this is optic vesicle but the proximal part is like a stalk so hence it is termed as optic stalk s-t-a-l-k stalk not, not that stalk not chicken stalk <laughs> it is optic stalk i'm not talking about as to s-t-o-c-k type of stalk it is optic stalk s-t-a-l-k pardon my pronunciation is not very good so anyhow th these are the structures that form now what will happen that a blood vessel will grow here a blood vessel will develop here and this blood vessel is called hyalide artery what it is called it is called hyalide artery and it is basically a branch of hyalide artery it is basically a branch of opth ophthalmic artery right so this artery it, it wants to go inside this optic vesicle and supply the inner structures of the eye it will later form the central retinal artery so what will happen that in the honor of this artery the ventral part of this optic vesicle and some part of this optic stalk as well it will invaginate inwards like this so you can see this animation that it will invaginate inward and as it invaginates inward this hyalide artery will also enter inside let's watch the animation again so initially it was like this but it invaginates inward like this to allow the entry of this hyalide artery and now here a fissure is formed so here is a fissure that has been formed and what is the name of this fissure this fissure is called choroid fissure this is called choroid fissure or it is also called optic fissure and some authors they like to put a very generic name to it they simply call it embryonic fissure i think it should not be called embryonic fissure because it's a quite generic name embryonic everything is embryonic in the embryo so it doesn't give away any details of this fissure the the proper name is choroid fissure or even we can call it optic fissure so this optic fissure develops and it allows the entry of this hyalide artery and now this optic vesicle has been turned into what we call as optic cup so these are the stages of development that first there is the formation of optic groove then there is formation of optic vesicle and optic stalk and then we have the formation of optic cup now what will happen that ultimately this 
fissure this choroid fissure or this optic fissure it will close as these folds they will meet in the midline like this so it will close like this and still there will be a hole for the entry of this hyalide artery here and this hyalide artery will ultimately form the central retinal artery in adults that's how to this the eye develops but what about the most important structure one of the most important structure of the eye that is lens of the eye how does the lens develop hey sorry for the interruption this video is part of our premium 3d eye embryology master class enjoying this lecture there is much more in the full course with cool 3D animations and quizzes. Join our full master class or get our embryology bundle. Just click the link in description or pinned comment. Back to the video now. How does the lens develop? Actually, the lens develops side by side along with the formation of optic cup, but I haven't shown that previously so that you do not get confused. So if I show all these structures here, here is the ectoderm. So here is the part of ectoderm. Now what will happen that as the as this is developing as this optic vesicle and optic uh, what is this optic stock is formed now what will happen that some here there will be the formation of a thickening in the ectoderm so here somewhat here there will be the thickening of ectoderm that will be formed this thickening is called what it is called it is called optic play cord it is called optic play cord I know I said optic uh, I said optic placoid in the lecture of ear embryology that is wrong pronunciation please pardon the actual pronunciation is not placoid it is called placoid so here is the optic placoid similar to optic placoid for the development of ear there is the optic placoid right so here we are talking about optic placoid so what will happen that Within this optic play cord, some cells will invaginate inwards towards this optic vesicle like this. Let me show you the animation. So they will invaginate like this to form a pit or groove and this is called lens pit. But what it will form? It will form the lens pit and this lens pit will grow towards this optic vesicle. Now here's something very important that as the optic vesicle grows towards the ectoderm this optic vesicle is actually inducing the formation of this lens pit what what is happening that this optic vesicle is inducing the formation of lens pit and as the lens pit forms this lens pit in turn induces the formation of optic cup so it will in turn it will in turn what it will induce it will induce the invagination of this ventral part of optic vesicle so that this optic vesicle is converted into optic cup so what is happening that optical ve optic vesicle is inducing the formation of lens and this lens structure lens primordium it is inducing the formation of optic cup this is called reciprocal induction right this is called reciprocal reciprocal induction so now what will happen that ultimately this will further invaginate this lens pit will further invaginate and ultimately ill it will be constricted here its neck will be constricted completely and it will be separated from the surface ectoderm and it will grow towards this it will grow towards the optic cup it will almost go into the optic cup like this so now this structure is actually called lens vesicle this pit initially it was a pit but as it grows further it, as it becomes bigger it beca it assumes a shape of a vesicle and this vesicle is not not the optic vesicle this is the optic vesicle this is what this is lens vesicle because it is going to form the lens of the eye these are two similar naming similarly named structures but please do not get confused here is the optic cup which uh, optic vesicle which has not turned into the optic cup but here 
वेजिकल दिस इज नॉट ऑप्टिक वेजिकल दिस इज द लेंस वेजिकल विच इज एक्चुअली द प्राइमोडियम ऑफ लेंस ऑफ योर आई सो आई होप यू आर वेरी क्लियर अबाउट दीज स्ट्रक्चर्स नो हाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड इट फॉर दैट वट आई विल डू इज दैट आई विल कट अ सेक्शन ऑफ इट सो हेयर आई हैव कट अ सेक्शन फ्रॉम द साइड सो वी आर जस्ट लुकिंग यूनिलेटरली ऑफ कोर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट्स पोज दिस इज द राइट साइड दिस इज द लेफ्ट साइड सो वी हैव टेकन अ सेक्शन एंड नो यू कैन ऑब्जर्व दीज स्ट्रक्चर अगेन अगेन फर्स्ट देर इज द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ कन्वर्जन ऑफ दिस ऑप्टिक वेजिकल इन टू ऑप्टिक स्टॉक एंड डिजिटल पार्ट विल स्टिल रिमेन ऑप्टिक वेजिकल देन ऑफ कोर्स देर विल बी फॉर्मेशन ऑफ लेंस पेट हेयर and this lens pit will form the lens vesicle like this and along with that there is the formation of choroid fissure please focus here to understand let's watch the animation again um it's like this and this choroid fissure is ultimately closed like this and here what will happen that this blood vessel this hyoid artery as it grows towards the lens here a layer of capillaries will develop around the lens right there is the network of capillary a layer of network of capillaries will develop around the lens here you can see right so it will develop around the lens and these are surrounding the lens mainly from posterior side and from the lateral side but they are not present at the interior end so here is the interior side you won't see uh, these this layer on the interior side it is only present posteriorly as well as laterally right this layer of network of capillaries that is surrounding the developing lens they are not around the adult mature fully formed lens please remember that they are only they are only surrounding the the baby not baby lens embryonic lens right please remember that and this temporary structure this temporary layer like structure is called tunica tunica means layer tunica vesculosa vesculosa means that it is layer of blood vessels a capillary network layer tunica vesculosa and it is around the lens so tunica vesculosa lentis lentis is another i think latin word for the lens so this name of this layer again it is a temporary structure do not tell anyone that it is normally present in the adult it is not normally present in the adult even it is not present in the baby a fully born baby it is just a temporary embryonic structure it is a layer of network of capillaries that surround the developing developing glands and it is called tunica vesculosa lentis please remember that so i hope you are clear up till now now to understand it even more what i will do is that i will cut another section and this time we will cut a section from the top like this and now let's watch the animation again it's very easy to understand i think again there is the formation of the lens pit and lens vesicle and you can understand these things hopefully and then there is closure of the choroid fissure and ultimately then there will be the formation of tunica vesculosa lentis and this tunica vesculosa lentis is deficient interiorly i don't know the reason to be honest i don't know why it is deficient interiorly uh, but it is what it is one reason may be that there is actually the proliferation of posterior lens epithelium which proliferate to form the lens fiber so not much activity is going on anteriorly so maybe not much blood is required at the anterior part of the lens so that might be one of the reason that's just my own personal hypothesis i am not sure if it is true or not but that might help you remember this fact so anyhow this is the animation now to understand it even more to make it crystal clear let's take a section from the back and here our main focus will be to understand the formation and closure of the choroid fissure so here we will focus this is the optic stock and optic vesicle now let's see that here there is the hyoid artery now it goes inward like this and there is the formation of choroid fissure please 
be very clear that this is the choroid fissure uh, let me again show you i i want each and every one of you to have a crystal clear concept choroid fissure some of you might get angry a few days back i see a comment that you are unnecessarily dragging this lecture you have just ruined my concept even that guy was very angry i don't know why some people get angry by watching my lectures that i just fuss around too much and i drag too much the reason is that i want to take each and every person with me well i am not actually physically taking every one of you with me i am not a creep <laughs> i want every one of you to understand it clearly so then what happens that choroid fissure is there and ultimately its folds will meet in the midline and this fissure will close like this so you see ultimately this fissure is closed basically this is the basic idea of development of eye and that's how eye develops of course this is not the end of course of development of eye we will go into details of formation of each of these structures but the basic idea is that here these two layers they will mainly form the retina this will form pigment retina we will go into detail and this will form the neural retina and between these two here there is this temporary space and it is called intra retinal intra intra means within within the retina intra retinal space so there is intra retinal space of course here is the lens primordium which will form the lens here is the primordium of central retinal artery then this ectoderm this overlying ectoderm along with that there will be the mesoderm as well so ectoderm and mesoderm it will form the cornea right and here this stalk optic stalk will actually help in formation of optic nerve do not tell anyone that this is going to form the optic nerve it is not actually itself going to form the optic nerve of course it will contribute towards the optic nerve but it itself will not transform into optic nerve we will see how it forms later but this is the basic idea of development of eye in the next lecture in the upcoming lectures we will see the development of all these structures by one by one we will talk about development of cornea of, of, of the lens of the retina of the optic nerve and of course surrounding these will be the uh, the choroid layer and sclera and of course here there will be formation of what is that there will be formation of iris here then there will be formation of ciliary body and ciliary process each and every structures that we will discuss in detail in the upcoming lectures please don't worry about it and now finally another very important point that must be discussed here so for that we will go to another 3d model to understand that now in this 3d model you can see that this is the optic stalk and optic cup and along with that we have this lens primordium now here you can see in this structure in this 3d model that eyes this these primordial eyes they are laterally placed they are much more laterally placed but actually in humans the eyes are not that much lateral they are uh, much more medially placed as you can see as you know already that eyes are much more medially placed but not they are not as much laterally actually in some animals and those animals which are common prey in the wild life for example deers so in deers for example the eyes they are laterally placed why they are laterally placed because this leads to a much more wider field of vision and it acts as an active threat detection system they have such a large wide view they they have large field of vision that they can easily detect the presence of predator and they have the these uh, awesome legs with which they can run quicker and they can avoid being preyed upon right but humans and monkeys and dogs i think and many other animals they have much more medially placed eyes and these medially placed eyes they are specially designed specially adapted according to their environment these eyes they are placed medially and they have much more focused sharp and binocular vision with an awesome depth perception right 
these are designed for such complex environment in which humans and some other animals live so initially even in human embryos initially the eyes develop much more laterally but later what happens that through some unknown mechanisms these eyes these primordial eyes they are relocated anteriorly they are relocated much more medially like this so if you watch the animation they are relocated medially through some unknown mechanism so this is almost the normal position of eye in humans and monkeys and chimpanzees and some other animals but in the deers and some other animals eyes are much more laterally placed and the reason i have already told you so that was about the basic overview of development of eye thank you so much for watching this video